In this lab exercise, you are required to develop a tic-tac-toe game app. Uh, let's just go over the uh, background studies you're supposed to do before you start coding for your app. So if you go to the lectures page for the course, uh, you have to review uh, at least two tutorial series before you actually uh, start your uh, app developments. The first one is about sharing an object among multiple buttons. So you can uh, go to the uh, link and then review the uh, videos if you uh, are not so confident about the uh, sharing the objects as an attribute in the controller class. And the second one is about the model pattern declaring array reference attributes. Specifically, if you go to the tutorial series, one of the later videos talks about how you can do error handling, which you will need for this particular lab six. And finally, uh, this lab is really about building the uh, tic-tac-toe game board using a two-dimensional array, the primitive array uh, in, the, uh, in Java. You are not allowed to use any of the library classes. You must use the uh, uh, two-dimensional array, primitive, primitive array to build your app. So if you go to the lectures page, you will see the lecture notes about two-dimensional array. You should really review them before you start. Uh, you will find that many of the examples that we went over in the class are actually useful for implementing the methods for your app. Okay, so that's about the background study. Make sure you go over them before you start coding. And now let's go to the uh, interface for the app and let's go over some basic functionality to see the expected usages for the uh, app. So this is the app over here. Let me just minimize this. Okay, so this is the app. So let's just go over the interface. The title over here, EECS 1022 Winter 18 Lab 6 Tick Title Game. So that's the title you should have for your app. And then we have two text fields, name of player X and name of player O. So we have basically, we're gonna use the terminology player X and player O. Player X is going to mark X on the board and player O is going to mark O on the uh, board, we'll see. And then uh, before we start uh, or we start the game, we have to say who plays first. You can, it can be either player X or player O, okay? So they can alternate the term. I will show you both cases. And as soon as you enter the name for the X, the name for player O, and also choose which, uh, which player goes first. And then you can start or restart the game. So this button here is going to be shared for, uh, by two functionalities. The first functionality is you can start a new game. Or after you, play, after you finish playing a new game, you can also click on the same button to restart a new game. Okay. And then once you start or restart a game, you can now choose a row number and choose a column number. And uh, over here, the display should show you the current status of the board as a two-dimensional array, the printout, and also to say who will be the next to play. Okay, well, I'll show you. And one thing to notice is the row number over here must be one, two, or three. Similarly for column number one, two, or three. So this uh, hits here for you. From the external user's point of view, the way they allocate, the way they identify slots in the board, uh, in a two-dimensional board, will be by row number one, two, three, or column one, two, three, which is different from how you will use indices to get access to a two-dimensional array in Java, which would be zero, one, or two. So the inconsistency here must be resolved by you as a programmer. Okay, but from the external point of view, you must use one, two, or three over here for the user, and one, two, or three over here. Okay, I'll show you, and then. After each turn for the player, you can say play, okay? So you're, gonna, you, you're going to click on the play button for as many times as the game is not, game o uh, the game is not over yet. So as soon as the game is over, clicking on the same play button is going to display some error to say, maybe either because there's already a winner or already there's a tie, okay? Let's just go over se several test cases. So let's say for player X, uh, let me just give some simple name. Let's just say A over here. And also for player uh, O, I would say B. And now, let's say I want to say who plays first. Let's say player X, which is A, is going to play first. And now, as soon as I say start a new game, click on this button here, it's going to say current game status, and it's going to print out the board. So the board here, you can say initially, all the slots are unoccupied, which in which case is going to be dot, dot, dot throughout. So it's a three by three board. So when a, uh, when a slot is represented by a single dot, that means it's all unoccupied. Okay, initially there's uh, no mark marker just yet by either player. And then we say the next player to play would be A because we chose player X, which is A, to be playing first. So now A should play first. 
Let's say, let's make it simple. If you should choose a row and call a number, if you say one and one. So it's gonna be row number one, by the way, uh, this is how the user is going to identify the row and call it. Row number one and row number two and also row number three. And then call a number one and call a number two and call a number three. And then we find out the intersection by you choosing the two values over here. Let's say uh, for player A, which is an X player, which is going to mark the X. And we're gonna say one and one. So now if we say play over here, it's gonna do two things. First of all, it's going to uh, mark X on one one over here. And also it's gonna change the next player to pay, play from A into B. Because after A is played, the turn will go to the other player. Okay, so now if we say play over here, you will see X has been marked over here, right? Okay, so the next player to play will be player O. Okay, so now let's choose something different. Let me just choose, for example, let's say uh, row number two and column number two. So the middle slot, if I say play over here, you can see uh, player O has just marked O on this particular location over here. So there could be some error case over here. Let's say now the next player to pay play will be A. Let's say A also choose two and two over here, in which case uh, the slot has already been occupied by player O so that, so that you cannot mark X anymore. So if I say play over here, this is why you should display. It was an error slot at two two over here uh, already occupied. So that's, that means player A over here uh, has failed to actually make this move, so you should make, uh, make the move again. So we got X, we got, oh, nothing has been changed, but we have to display this error. So there are two things you should display in the case of the error case. So you should display the error to say which slot has already been occupied, and also, uh, you should also dis you should always you should always display the current game status as a two-dimensional board over here, okay? And the next player to play will be A. Okay, let's say we put uh, row number three and column number three, let's say. So row number three and column number three over here, and then we say play. Okay, so now it's success, and the next player to play will be uh, B. Okay, let's just try. And now, for B here, if I simply say one, and then one over here, apparently you can see that this wouldn't be possible because one and one has been already occupied by X, right? So now it will say play, and then it was an error slot already occupied, right? As, as long as the slot is already occupied, either by the same player or by the, the other player, you should display the error because then you can, you can never overwrite a particular slot for more than once. Okay, let's just finish the game. So now uh, for player B, so let's say we have, let's say one and two. So row number one and column number two. So you can predict it's gonna be here, right? Okay, we say play over here, so now we got. So you can see that so far we haven't got any winner, or we haven't reached any tie just yet. But I wish, let's say for this particular game, we want to eventually reach a tie, let's say. So now for player A, uh, the turn, okay? So you should notice that every time over here, you must display the right player name over here to say this player is the next one to play, okay? So now let's say we put, uh, let's say uh, three and two. Row number two, uh, three, and column number two, okay? And then say play, okay, like that, okay? And then for player B, let's say three and one, okay? So you put it here. So, so far, no winner just yet. And then for player number one, uh, for player number X, for player X, so let's say we have uh, row number two and column number one. And then, like that, no winner just yet, and Let's say for player O, and we're gonna have, let's say row number one and column number three, play. Okay, so now what you can see is, okay, so let's say in this case, we don't have a tie. So in this case, we do have a winner. You can see that the way uh, player B wins is by a diagonal over here, right? So you should really review in the instruction, what does it really mean when we have a winner, when we have a tie. So when you have a winner, you can either win by a row, or you can read by a column, or you can read by a diagonal, okay? So there are in total eight possibilities for you to win, either by either of the three rows, or either of the three columns, or either of the two diagonals, okay? So these are the two, uh, these are the eight possibilities you should really consider, okay? So now, game is over with B being the winner. You can see that B has won, B has won over here.
Okay, so now let's say if you try to click on the play button again, you can see that it doesn't show you what who will be the next player. Okay, so if you say play again, it's gonna say error, game is already over. And then you display the latest uh, game status to say the game is already over with B being the winner. Okay, so you can see the idea. Uh, one more thing to show you. Let's say I have, uh, let's say, let's say, uh, notice one thing here. When I say row number one and column number three, basically we got two mistakes at the same time over here. The first mistake is one, three, which is one and three. Co row number one, column three is over here, which is already marked by the circle. It's already occupied, okay? And second error is you're trying to make a move when the game is already over. So we got two errors over here, but the, the, uh, the error for game is already over has a higher rank. So that means you should display that error only. So in this case, you wouldn't display to say that uh, the slot one three is already occupied. You don't do that. You only display a particular slot is already occupied when the game is not over yet. Okay. So now in this case, you only display the game is already over error. Okay. So now we have seen uh, many cases already. Okay. So now let's just see how uh, how we can have another two wins and also a tie. Okay. Let's just uh, for completeness. So now let me just say C over here and D over here, okay? And then I click on the same button here, it's going to start a new game, okay? So it's a current game status, you got all the slots being unoccupied and also the next player to play would be C, okay? Uh, now in this case, let's make uh, an easy win. Let's say we got one, three over here, okay? And then we also, let's say we got two, three, okay? And then let's say one, two, and then let's say we got two, two, okay? And then also we got one, one. Okay, in that case, you can see game is already over with C being the winner, right? You can see that like that, okay? So it's already a winner. So winning by a single row, okay? And then of course, if you click on playing, you're gonna say error game is already over. You wouldn't say slot one, one is already occupied. You would simply say the game is over, remember that. Okay, let's do another win. Let's say E and F. But now this time, let me choose the player O to, to be playing first. Okay, and then I start a new game over here. So player O, so you can see that the next player to play will be F, which is player O. Okay, and then let's say we do one one over here. You can see that we mark O over here rather than X. Okay, notice that. Okay, so we say one one. Let's say we have another one. Let's say we have two, one. Uh, let's say one, two. One and two. Four, player E. Okay, over here. Okay, and then we have two, one, and then play. Okay, and then we have two, and then two. Okay, and then we have another one. Let's say three, one, over here. And then you can see we are winning by a column over here. So game is over with F being the winner. F is the O player over here, right? Now I'm just showing you one particular run where you can just win by a column. Of course, you can have more moves before you win by a column. It's, uh, I will leave them to you for you to test, okay? So, so far we have seen winning by a column, winning by a row, and also winning by also a diagonal, right? Let's see how we can reach a tie. Let's try that. EF, uh, of course, up to now, the game is already over. If you say play over here, it was an error, game is already over, right? Okay, uh, let's say EF, let's say G and H. Let's be careful, let's make a tie, okay? A tie simply means no one actually wins so far by row, column, or diagonal, but we have no available slots anymore, okay? So let's say, uh, who plays first? Let's say we uh, play O. I'll play O, so the uh, next play will be H. Let's try that. Let's say three one for player O. So let's say play. And then you will see that, okay, it's already, uh, it's mark O over here. And then the next one, let's say two one for player X. Okay, next player, so G for player X. So two one for player X, so we got over here. And the next one, player O, let's say two two, the middle slot. Let's say two two over here for player O, okay, which I have over here. So far, nobody has won. And then uh, step number four, let's say uh, the right corner, 
at the right top corner. Let's say th uh, one, three for player X. So one, three, four, player X. Okay, that we have here. And then the next one, let's say we got, uh, let's say the uh, bottom right corner. And then we got uh, three, three for player O. So three, three for player O. And then we have that, okay? So now, in order to prevent uh, this player to win, let's put it here on the top left corner. And then let's say 1-1 one, one for player X. So 1-1 one, one for player X over here. So we have that. And again, so far, nobody has won. Okay, you can see we only got one, two, three, three slots left. Let's just go on. And then for the next one, let's say we have uh, one, two for uh, player O. If you do that, Okay, so now we have here, and then uh, uh, player O almost almost wins, so we gotta be careful. So now for the next one, let's prevent it, prevent it to happen, so let's put it here for player X. So let's say one, and, uh, three, two. Row number three, and then column number two for player X. And then we have here. And then finally, you can see that we basically reach a time, but not just yet. So now it's the turn for uh, player H, uh, which is player uh, player O with name H. So now the only option player O has would be only this slot over here. We're gonna play it. We have no choice. So that'll be two two. Uh, be two three. Row number two and color number three. If we do that, you can see that over here nobody has one. But at the same time, we have no dot in the board, which means no slots are unoccupied. So every slot has been marked by the two players, and so the game is over with a tie between G and H, okay? So now, if I say 2-3 again, it's gonna say game uh, is already over, it's an error, okay? You gotta do that first, and then you, you, it will display the latest status for the game again, which, which is a tie between G and H, okay? So, so far we have seen uh, basically quite many possibilities over here. You can either be a winner by row, a winner by column, a winner by diagonal, and also it can be a tie, in which case there, there's no unavailable slot anymore in the board, okay? You should really handle all the cases for your app. Make sure you test all of them uh, beyond this uh, demonstration.